This is how I use my electronic drum kit with my computer and drum VSTs, plugins, and samplers. I'm including every tip and trick that I know of. I'll cover MIDI, connections, buffer size, latency, round robins, velocity layers, and the whole shebang. Let's start with a broad overview of the kit and connections, and then I'll cover each bit in depth. Now, while I'm saying all this, I'm going to let Faceless Drum Guy work on his latest LP called As Faceless As I Want To Be, which is going to go straight to number one, I'm sure. Okay, so I have a Roland TD-17KB kit with add-ons plus an additional drum module, which is a two-box drum at five. I go USB from the Roland to the PC, a MIDI cord from the two-box module to a MIDI to US converter, and then from that to the PC via USB. I use a Focusrite Scarlet Solo as my audio interface. I'm using Reaper as my DAW usually, and using the Scarlet Solo in Reaper is simply a matter of going to preferences and audio device and choosing the Scarlet as my audio device as my output for audio. The Roland Kit and the Drummond 5 are in the mini list because I have them hooked up like I described above, plus beforehand I had downloaded and installed Roland's TD-17 drivers for Windows. Latency is a word you'll see a lot in e-drum discussions online. Essentially, it's the time between you striking the drum pad and the sound of the sample being played on your computer speakers. Buffer size affects latency. A smaller buffer size will reduce latency but require more processing power. Adjust your buffer size in your DAW settings. Common sizes are 64, 128, or 256 samples. That's the quick rundown. Here's the actual bread and butter. For my kit, I use a Roland TD-17KB, which is the original version without the acoustic style hi-hat stand and pads. I've added a few pieces over time, including a Lemon 13-inch 3-zone ride, an additional CY5 cymbal pad, which is the same as my hi-hat pad, plus three older PDA rubber pads. And I bought a Roland rack for additional tubing and mounting options. I use a two-box Drummond 5 module, and currently I have just the three PDA's going into it. And I'm going USB from the Roland module directly to the PC. For the Drummond 5, I'm connecting via a MIDI cable from the MIDI out of the Drummond 5 to a MIDI to USB converter that is then connected to the PC via USB cable. I've not noticed any noticeable latency or speed difference by using USB versus a MIDI cable. So in my opinion, for sending MIDI data, both are fine choice. If your module offers it, however, I would recommend you go USB over MIDI to go from the module to the computer. Now this will allow you to take advantage of other possibilities that I'll cover later like using your module as an audio interface, but more on that soon. So the question some people have, do you need an audio interface? The benefits of using a separate audio interface include better performance and audio quality, lower latency, and the obvious benefits of being able to record analog audio if you want to. I use the Scarlett Solo from Focusrite. It's just a great option for cost performance. Plus, I don't need multiple analog inputs, so it was a perfect choice for me. It's got its own ACO drivers as well, which I'll cover that soon what an ACO driver is, which is huge for low latency playing. ACO is a technology used by sound devices for low latency audio transfer between software and hardware. So you may ask, do I need an audio interface? Well, not really. If you're on a Mac, they all have great low latency performance already, so you're good. For PC users like me, you can get by without an audio interface using a couple different methods, which I'll cover here. Roland modules can act as an audio interface. I didn't know this until a year or two ago. Make sure you've installed the Roland drivers for your module and ensure that you've set the USB mode in your module setting to vendor mode. This allows it to transfer audio as well as just MIDI over that USB connection. Now when you've got that done, you'll just open your DAW and select your Roland module as the output device for your DAW's audio output. So a couple of notes on this though. I've done this, it does work, but at least for me, the audio from the drum samples or whatever you're outputting from your DAW, it wouldn't go as loud as I'd like. Plus latency was good, but I get better latency from the Focusrite audio interface when that is set as my output device. It does work though, and you should try it yourself. That may work for you without having to buy an audio interface. Note that modules from other brands may be able to do this as well. Modules from Alesis, Yamaha, etc. But I'm not sure. Another option to go if you don't want to pursue getting an audio interface. ACO for All is another free solution for Windows users who want low latency but who don't have an audio interface that comes with its own ACO drivers. Basically, you download ACO for All, install it, and then set ACO for All as your output for audio in your DAW. 
Note that you need to open the ACO for all settings and correctly tell it which speakers to send the audio output to. Plus, you'll need to set your buffer size. Some people have a great result just using ACO for all, but it does require a powerful PC for it to give you good quality audio and low latency. Whichever interface you decide to get, I recommend choosing one that has their own ACO drivers, particularly if you're on a Windows PC like I am. The Scarlett Solo from Focusrite is currently somewhere around 100 bucks in the US and it gives you excellent audio, little to no latency, great value. So all about buffer size, I typically have the buffer size on my Scarlett Solo set to 64 samples when I'm playing live. This gives me very good response, no noticeable latency. There have been times I've had to raise that buffer size when playing certain drum plugins though, notably things like Iguana Drums Karma Edition and Spectre Digital's Extinction Level Events. Adding a bunch of plugins to your track using extremely large sample sets like the Iguana Drums or using unoptimized plugins can put a strain on the system and you'll start to notice pops and cracks in your audio when you're playing. This means it's time to raise your buffer size. What I do if that happens, I'll try 96 samples or 128 to see if that takes care of it. I've yet to encounter a situation that needs a higher buffer size than that. You can always disable currently unnecessary plugins while you're playing too, or go with a lighter version of the plugin you're using. Some plugins like Get Good Drums will have a CPU light preset version of all of their presets. Then after you've recorded your MIDI performance, you can raise the buffer size up to whatever you like during mixing because latency won't matter at all then. Many people will actually raise their buffer sizes to 256, 512 or higher when mixing just to give your system more space to process the plugins etc tips on keeping latency down I've already mentioned a couple ways to keep latency down when recording MIDI drums or any other MIDI performance actually disable unnecessary plugins mute unnecessary tracks in your project and use CPU light presets in your drum VSTs when playing live you can always add that stuff back in later during playback or change a preset later during playback. Other tips for keeping latency as low as possible are turn off your Wi-Fi and Ethernet cards. No internet access for your PC means that updating background software will not happen, things like Windows updates, etc. In your drum module settings, turn off local control so your module won't have to produce sounds in the module. You're not listening to those anyway. Close every unnecessary application and window on your computer that you're not using. Set your buffer size as low as you can go without hearing pops, cracks, and audio degradation. Disable antivirus while playing live, and then turn it back on when you're done recording. Keep your computer, audio interface, DAW, and plugins up to date. If you have any other VST tracks on your project, try bouncing them to audio files first. This will allow you to close those plugins and free up those resources while you're recording drums. Drum plugins, VSTs, and samplers. You probably know there are now a crazy amount of plugins and sample libraries for drums and every other instrument out there. For some people, TuneTrack's Easy Drummer 3 is tops for people getting into playing and recording drums on their computers. TuneTrack also has Superior Drummer 3, which is the bigger brother to Easy Drummer 3, as it has more options, velocity layers, round robins, and sample depth. There are many other producers of great drum libraries, though, like Hertz Drums, Mixwave, Get Good Drums, ML Drums, BFD, and many, many others. Each of them offering different feeling drum samples, but all of them are great quality with lots of velocity layers and round robins. Velocity layers are recordings of an instrument at various levels of intensity. For instance, if you have a drum library and it's got a snare drum with five velocity layers, then it will have five samples of someone hitting that drum at five increasing levels of velocity. So the first one would be a ghost note. The second one would be a little harder. The third would be a medium level hit. The fourth would be a snare hit pretty hard. And the fifth sample of the snare hit would be at maximum force. This method of velocity layering the samples is better than the way, for instance, old drum machines worked by having one sound file of a snare drum hit that always plays whether you strike your snare pad lightly or hard. But if you've ever played with an old drum machine, you'll notice that if you do a quick roll on the pad, it'll sound like a machine gun. That's because the same exact sound sample is being played over and over quickly. Round robins help to mitigate machine gunning by constantly switching the sample heard for every hit. So instead of striking a pad five times quickly and hearing the same sample file five times in a row, you'll hear five different recordings of the same velocity and type of snare hit each time. Each sample is a different actual hit, 
so the end result is hopefully no more machine gunning. Standalone versus using a plug-in and a DAW. Many drum VSTs and libraries come in the classic plug-in architecture. Like a VST3 or a VST. You put the plug-in on a track in your DAW and there you go. Some drum sample producers also release a standalone version as well. It's the same exact thing as the plug-in version, but it doesn't require a DAW to host it. You just open the standalone version by itself and start playing. Now note that with standalone versions, you'll need to set your audio output in the app itself before you'll be able to actually hear anything. You'll set it the exact same way that you did when you set it in your DAW by selecting your audio output device, whether it's your drum module, your audio interface, ACO for all, or whatever else you're using. DAWs. A DAW or a DAW is a digital audio workstation. It's just a software application that allows you to record, edit, playback audio and MIDI. You can put effects on your tracks, export them as MP3s, play with and record samplers like Contact, etc. The DAW that I use is Reaper. I've also used a lot of Cubase in years past. Reaper allows for an indefinite free trial. Although it is not free, you can continue using the free trial without limitation as long as you like. Other great options for DAWs include Ableton Live, Logic, Pro Tools, FL Studio, and there's many more. How to record MIDI from your drums in Reaper. Now you can do all this in several ways, but I'll show you the way that I do this. Right click somewhere in Reaper and choose Insert Virtual Instrument on New Track. Choose the plugin or sample player that you'd like to use. On the pop-up window that shows, choose No if you only want stereo output from the plugin. Click Yes if you want to multi out the audio output of that plugin. If you click yes, Reaper will create a bunch of tracks in your project, and then you'll be able to assign each sound to each of those tracks from within the plugin itself. You can right click the record arm button and see that I have all MIDI inputs selected as my input source for this track. This to me is the easiest way to do it, unless you have a bunch of MIDI devices hooked up and you only want input from one of them. Hit record and play. You're all set to play your huge chart topping hit. Just like Faceless Drum Guy's number one smash, faces are overrated. By the way, his dad bought a million copies just to kickstart the chart progress, but everybody does that, right? Which drum VST or sampler plugin should I get? There's no universal answer to this question. If you want free options, consider Steven Slate Drums Free, ML Drums Free, BFD Player Free, or any of the others you can find on my recent video with 19 free drum plugins. If you want to jump up the quality, check out all the videos on my channel. You'll find reviews on a bunch of great drum libraries, most of which work great with eDrums. The majority have a bunch of add-on libraries as well for different styles. Here are some popular options for drum plugins and samplers. Easy Drummer 3, Addictive Drummer 3, BFD Player or BFD 3, Hertz Drums, ML Drums, Steven Slate Drums 5.5, Groove Agent from Steinberg. Contact is a sampler application, and many drum sample producers like to release their samples on the Contact platform. Many of these drum libraries can be played on the free Contact Player application. This is just as it sounds. It can play Contact libraries that were made for this player program. Occasionally, you'll find some Contact libraries that are not compatible with the free Contact Player, and they require you to actually own the full Contact application itself. But don't worry, these are fairly rare and most contact-based drum libraries can be played on the free contact player. Examples of contact drum libraries are Get Good Drums, Mixwave, and many others. Which drum library or plugin is best for you? That's something only you can answer. I invite you to check out all the videos on my channel to listen to many of these played live. Here's a list to get you started.